Hello and welcome to Oxford City Football Club. I'm here at the last home game before Christmas where up to 200 fans are allowed back inside the newly renamed Velocity Stadium. Oxford City are the second smallest club in their tier but despite that equaled their record of making it through to the second round proper of the FA Cup where they narrowly lost 1-0 to Shrewsbury Town. Over the past few weeks I've been finding out what's been happening here at Marsh Lane and the drastic changes brought in due to the pandemic. Oxford City Football Club is in the National League South, the sixth tier of the English Football Pyramid, where they have been for eight years. The club will celebrate its 139th birthday this year, but at one point in its history, played host to Bobby Moore and Harry Redknapp. However, the Hoops seem to be doing alright without the big-name coaches, having not only made it to the second round proper of the FA Cup this year, but also in 2017. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic, the club is thriving with 125 advertising boards sponsored, a two-camera streaming service, and the team is battling it out in the playoff spots. But just who are the people keeping the wheels on the Oxford City bus turning around? I'm Patrick Locke. I am the uh, media officer here at Oxford City. Yeah, my name is uh, Mick Livesey. I'm the commercial director of Oxford City Football Club. Yeah, I'm Paul Lyon. I'm the finance director at Oxford City. I'm also 50% owner of the club. Patrick, Mick and Paul are just three of several people working tirelessly behind the scenes at Oxford City, but what did they do in the topsy-turvy year of 2020? For starters, something nearly every professional football club up and down the country had to invest in was a streaming service, and this was no different for Oxford City. When it became clear that games were going to be behind closed doors, it was kind of something across the division, the set one, set two divisions, National League, National League, North, South, that games needed to be streamed really because at the end of the day we're going to have all of these fans at home and that down at this level there's no other income, actually income, than fans coming through the doors. As I've mentioned, the Hoops have a two camera setup unlike many streaming services in the National League South and they regularly get positive feedback with some viewers and clubs saying it's the best streaming service in the league. Oxford City stream includes full match commentary. Okay, a little outswinger this time. And that's an opportunity, that's a goal! Yeah. That is a goal for Oxford City, is that Joe Osler? He looked it, it looked it's it. It's Joe Osler. Live action replays. Leveled it up then for Oxford City. Oxford City 2, Haringey Borough 2. Uh, Haringey trying to play the offside trap. Uh, he... And highlights from previous games during half time and full time. But as with any new technology, it does come with its difficulties. Actually, the first week where we were left to, on our own devices, it, it became very much chaotic because. Funnily enough, actually, I had a household contact that had the coronavirus symptoms, so I wasn't allowed to come. We, we did get a stream out in the end, and um, <laughs> it ended up having about a five-minute gap in the middle because the, the um, computer decided to reboot halfway through, which just basically everything that could have gone wrong that day did go wrong. Another key player in the club's live stream is Mick Livesey, who put the whole setup in place. We acted very quickly, I think. You know, I can sit here and tell you very calmly now um, Boris Johnson made an announcement. We expected fans to come back at the start of the season. I think we had less than a week um, when we were told fans weren't coming back. In that time, we, we, we secured the equipment for a multi-streaming operation. We got it all up and running within a week. It's, it's something I'm actually incredibly proud of. You know, the Football League only have a one-camera operation. Oxford City have a two. Whilst Mick has every right to be proud of the media side of things at the club, there is something he should be even more proud of. Before it was a lockdown, I, I became seriously ill and I had COVID and I was, I was in hospital, I was in a coma. Um, they thought I was going to die, but I didn't. Um, you know, probably upset quite a few people by making a recovery. Uh, you know, I, I remember speaking to Paul Lyon, who's one of the owners of the football club, and I was designing new commercial packages in my hospital bed. And... Um, I think Paul and Justin probably thought I'd gone a bit funny in hospital when, when we set the targets for the season. Off the back of Mick's stunning resilience and dedication to Oxford City, the club now have all four stands sponsored, with the main stand receiving its branding in mid-January. 
They also have over 100 advertising boards sold and sponsors here, there and everywhere on their kit. Despite the pandemic, 2020 was a commercial record for the club, with the community nature of non-league football playing a huge part in keeping the pennies coming in. We have a, we have a business club, the Oxford City Business Club. We have over 70 businesses involved in that, where we all network, support and help each other. And basically, all our commercial partners are not really commercial partners, they're all friends. You know, we're all on this journey together. We try and support each other, try and get them business. They try and help us. And, and that's what makes the world go around. Although it was a record year for the Hoops, having to play behind closed doors week in, week out not only meant that matches felt a bit like training games, but a limit of around 70 personnel in the ground did leave a dent in the bank balance. Um, before the season started, um, the National League um, promised that there'd be funding from the FA or the government to um, replace the lo lost income. October, November, December, three months of funding came through and that was split between the clubs. Um, depending on which division you're in. It was National League, Premier and North and South. That doesn't replace all the income we lose. That, that replaces enough income to, in theory, keep the clubs playing. Um, the, the idea of the funding was to make sure that you know, we've got 66 teams in the National League and um, they want 66 teams to still be going by the time we get to the end of season in June. Whilst being primarily a football club, Oxford City is also used to host netball fixtures and has its own catering company which provides food for events at the ground, neither of which could be fully utilised last year. The club did have to furlough players and staff, but Paul and co-owner Justin Merritt have been very crafty with how they handle the finances. We've got some really good young lads that have come down from football league teams on loan and we've signed a few. And so we've, we've done it on a, on a low budget and uh, we just hope we can see the season out because we're confident we can stay in the playoffs if... if um, Things keep going. So overall, we're okay. You know, we've lost a lot of income, um, but but we're still we're still here. And as long as things can get back to normal for next season, we'll be fine. Funding from the FA wasn't the only money going into the club, though. Back on the 9th of November, the Hoops defeated Northampton Town 2-1 in the first round of the FA Cup on live television to go through to a so-called quarter of a million pound game against Shrewsbury Town. As we know now, Oxford City didn't progress any further in the competition, but they have equaled another club record of reaching the fifth round of the FA Trophy after they defeated Harringay Borough in a thrilling match that ended 4-2, with prize money from both of the cup tournaments being a huge help to the club. Yeah, Shrewsbury was the £250,000 game because the next round would have been live on the TV um, and um, the prize money as well for getting through, so uh, that's what it would have been worth. Uh, but we still did very well, you know, we, we, we had two live games on the TV that we get paid for by BT Sport. And we had the prize money for winning three games we won in the FA Cup. And um, so we get the prize money for that. So we did very well out of it. And we never budget for FA Cup. You, you assume you're going to go out in the first round. Um, you, you can't budget to go through rounds of the Cup because you could get drawn against a, a, um, a team higher than you in the, in the first qualifying and go straight out. And uh, you never know. At the time of recording, the Hoops have a bye in the league next week, so they can enjoy a well-deserved break. Besides a few games postponed in December, Oxford City have had dual fixtures on Tuesday nights and Saturday afternoons every week since the end of October, which is a big effort for a semi-professional club. It's so difficult for these boys because they're, they've got jobs and families and, and work and whatever they need to do. It, it, and then for us to then demand so much from them when they come under the auspices of, of Oxford City again, it's, it's really tricky. So we are very respectful and, and we remember that at all times. But it's not just the players and coaches under the strain of two games a week, but the backroom staff as well. Non-stop, you know, you um, you normally have one game a week and um, when the Saturday game's out of the way, you're thinking about the game the following Saturday. But when you have a Tuesday or a Wednesday game put in there, you're, you're having to think about the Tuesday game and also the Saturday game at the same time and they're, they're all crossing over. So it is very different and it does feel like a, a lot more lot more work to do. Um, when things are going well, a Tuesday, Saturday is good. When things are not going so well, maybe um, it's, you need a bit more time. So there's not much training going on, obviously. With, with a Tuesday, Saturday routine, uh, we only get one training session a week. So there's not really the opportunity to put things right if they're not, if they're not going well. With Oxford City equaling records and comfortably in the playoff spots in the National League South this year, it should be fairly safe to say that this little club in Headington has a very bright future.
In January 2021, two more staff were hired in the media department to increase the visibility of the hoops on social media, with the aim of filling every stand in the ground come the end of the year, and when COVID is more of a thing of the past. I'm Wes Spearman, and this has been Beyond the Turnstiles with Oxford City Football Club.